Something just happened on this chart that the last time it happened, Cardano rallied over 60%. What exactly is that? I'll go over that in a second. In today's video, we're going to cover some ADA price action. We're also going to cover some key announcements coming out of Token 2049 in Singapore. A new airdrop that is coming to not just potentially Cardano holders, but Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and all the top layer ones. What does that mean for Cardano and how is that going to help the network? We also have some uh, updates on Cardano in Argentina and when Charles Hoskinson is going to meet with President Javier Malay. And also a big upgrade is coming by the end of the year. Another massive upgrade, Ouroboros Laos is coming. What is that going to do for the network and how could that affect Cardano? Let's start with this video from Token 2049. And on the back end, we'll go back to the chart. So... This is Charles Hoskinson at Token 2049 giving a keynote speech. Pay close attention. Then there's a question of incentives and distribution. Ordinarily, I've been in space so long, I kind of know all the dirty tricks. What you do is you go to a VC, they give you a bunch of money, they get founder tokens, and then they dump on retail and the network launches. You know who you are. You do. And they make great money. And then the ecosystem collapses, and the next thing goes, the next thing goes, the next thing goes. That's not how we get ahead. So instead, here's what we do. Just do something called a glacier drop. So you take 135 million accounts across all the major cryptocurrencies, you just airdrop to them. And if people want it, they mine it. In the process of mining it, they launch the network. So that's how you get a fair distribution. Right? Let's stop it right there. How cool is that? A glacier airdrop where it doesn't matter what chain you're on. It doesn't have to be Cardano. You could be a Bitcoin Maxi. You could be a Ethereum whale. You can be a Solana meme coin degenerate. And you can get these tokens airdropped. And if you want them, you go mine them. And in doing so, you start the network. Um, I mean, the, the, uh, the, I have no words to say. Uh, when you just don't, when you think that Cardano and what they're doing can't get any better, uh, Charles goes on stage and does this. Let's go back to the video. There's only about uh, 40 seconds left. Right? Everybody gets it. Everybody has it. And here's the other beautiful part about that. In the process of doing this, we invented a new protocol called Minotaur. We wrote up a Shireen who went on to create Eigenlayer with the technology. We created Midnight with it. And it's called Minotaur, and it's multi-resource consensus. What's so magical and special about multi-resource consensus is it allows you to maintain a blockchain with multiple consensus protocols at the same time. You go talk to the Bitcoin Maxis and they say, proof of work. You go talk to us in the third generation and we say, proof of stake. But you know what? I just want to highlight the agility of this man on stage. Thank you. You got to get your peanut butter and jelly together. So why can't we hybridize things and bring all the consensus protocols together? And guess what? If you have the validators maintaining the state of the system together, you can pay block rewards to them. So you start looking like a layer two to everybody. Doesn't that bring everybody together if every system is working together? Um, this man is talking about and doing things that I don't even think was possible. How the hell are you going to combine proof of work, proof of stake, proof of history, proof of transfer, all the other proof of X, Y, and Z that's available right now as a consensus mechanism in cryptocurrency. Uh, leave it to Charles, the team, and Cardano to make it happen. Um, I want to share this post here. Uh, well, that was posted by Tim Harrison. I want to share this post on X by Stake with Pride. Uh, by the way, if you're not following this account, highly recommend you do so. A lot of great info on here. So Midnight will airdrop 135 million wallets across top blockchains. And they came out with a potential list. So around 40 million Bitcoin wallets, 45 million Ethereum wallets, 20 million Binance Smart Chain wallets, 10 million Solana wallets, Tron, uh, Polygon, Avalanche, Doge, Near, Algorand, Phantom. And of course, this is just a speculative list. There's no official list that has come out yet. But the beauty of it is we always talk about interoperability and bringing all these cryptocurrencies together and the, you know, the world of crypto is going to become interchangeable and interlocked. Well, what are projects doing to actually make that happen? And this is Cardano throwing their hat into the ring. Uh, I know some of you are probably waiting for the chart. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But I do want to share this 
Uh, this to me is is very big, and and I don't know why it's not talked about more, but. What Cardano is going to do in Argentina, as you can see here, Cardano founder to meet Argentina president Javier Milei in Argentina in October to discuss the cryptocurrency economy. Uh, Charles is heading to Tech Forum Argentina to discuss the future of blockchain in a conversation with Argentine president, which is planned for October 19th. Uh, in the upcoming event, Hoskinson expects to discuss blockchain potential to transform global economic, political, and social systems. So they're going to share a stage together, but he's also, according to sources, going to have a meeting with him as well. This is from Charles himself. Quote, we've had many discussions with his administration. And I'm going to meet him probably on the 19th, but at some point, if not then, then within that time frame, we've been discussing with people that work with him and forum what blockchain's future is going to look like. And he also mentioned it doesn't necessarily, here you go, uh, it's not Cardano only. There's a whole family of technologies, uh, but we know uh, Cardano can do pretty much what any other blockchain claims they can do, uh, but better. And with the decentralized governance now in place, although we're still waiting on phase two of the Chang hard fork, uh, exciting things are happening. All right, let's get back to the chart. I mentioned in the very beginning, something just happened that the last time it happened, Cardano rally 60%. And what exactly do I mean? Let's take a look at the bottom here, our liquidity flow index. This is a brand new oscillator that is launched by us here at Sin City Crypto, which measures money inflow, money outflow, and the gray line is your sentiment. So how are investors and traders feeling? Let's take a look at what we're seeing right now. We see money flow continue to be green. So money is consistently flowing in. Price sentiment dip below the midline, and now just crossed above it. Let's take a look at the last time this happened. And the last time this happened was back here in January of this year. Money flow was green for a very long time. Price sentiment dipped below the midline and then crossed back above with money flow continuing to be green. Well, what did the price do in this exact time frame? Let's take a look at exactly where it crossed which was this candle right here. And let's take that measure and see the rally that Cardano had, not even from the wick towards the bottom, but from the open of the candle. The first leg saw a 30% rise in Cardano in a matter of 13 days. If we go further and capture the entire move from open to wick, that move was 61%. And we're seeing the exact same scenario play out on our liquidity flow index oscillator. So, if we see something similar, now, of course, TA is all about probabilities. Nothing is guaranteed. But if we see a 60% gain in the price of Cardano, you're looking at 57 to 58 cents. Uh, that would take out a lot of key levels, including 39 cents, including 44 cents. And the big one here would be 51 cents, completely flipping this downtrend into an uptrend. And after that happens... Who knows how high up Cardano can go? We know when Cardano moves, it moves extremely fast. And with Chang Part 2 coming, with Ouroboros Laos coming, that's going to make the network a lot faster. Uh, we could see rampant speculation on top of actual use case. People buying the token because they need to use it, whether it's for voting, whether they want to become a uh, delegated representative, be part of the Constitutional Committee. These are all things that should bring demand pressure to the price of Cardano. Real quick on this Laos upgrade, uh, when Rick McCracken posted a poll talking about which, uh, which upgrade should they focus on, 55% wanted the Laos upgrade, and Charles said, yes, this is true. Uh, and then so a couple of things here is essentially a way to boost the speed of the network. It allows for the enhancement of the user experience through improved transaction throughput. Consequently, it enhances the network's efficiency and user experience. That is one of my big things. Uh, why I was bullish on Solana when it got down at uh, 9 $10 after the FTX FUD was because the dApps on Solana were very user-friendly. You look at some like Near Protocol, very user-friendly. A lot of the newer blockchains, very user-friendly. I'm not saying Cardano is not user-friendly, but I'm always on the side of make it more user-friendly. Don't make a protocol that's so daunting to the average user when you try to bring them into the ecosystem, they just throw their hands up and they quit. We need to make things easy, 
simple, sexy, make it fun, make it exciting. And that is what Cardano was looking to do with Ouroboros Leos. If you enjoy this video, we have tons of other Cardano content. Check out the playlist in the description of this video and on our YouTube page. Also, come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.